we reach the conclusion about this Christmas study. Oh, what this has done. The very popularity of Christmas should cause the Christian to question it. All the world loves it. Around the globe. In churches. Anyone and everyone can celebrate Christmas without question. Outright pagans, nominal Christians, even Buddhists and Hindus. Ecumenical. If in reality December 25th were a date set by God to remember the birth of Jesus, there is no doubt that the world would have nothing to do with it. If God said chapter and verse with a book name that December 25th was Jesus' birthday, no one would celebrate. You think the stores would celebrate the birth of Jesus? Well, let me ask you a question. If you go into one of those malls, if you go into one of those big stores, and you line up to see who, Jesus or Santa? After all, God has commanded one day in seven, the Lord's day, to worship him. And does the world deserve that? Of course not. Not even Christians. It is expected the world loves Christmas, but hates the Lord Jesus Christ. John 15, 18, John 15, 23 to 25. Why is it, Christian, that you'll miss church on Sunday, but you'll celebrate December 25th? It shuns anything pertaining to true religion. I don't like that word, religion, but religion is man-made. Jesus Christ is God-approved. Shouldn't the Christian be just and a little suspicious of the celebration in which the whole sinful world can join in the ecumenical movement that everyone celebrates that day? One way to test the scripturalness of their practices to, is to reflect on what we would expect missionaries to teach new converts in a foreign culture. We assume that they would use the Bible as their guidebook. If they could start a new local church or churches without importing American culture encumbered with Roman Catholicism, liberal Protestantism, and crass commercialism, wouldn't that be wonderful? Missionaries who have urged new converts to forsake all pagan superstitions Relics have later been questioned about the apparent inconsistency of their own American Christian customs. Well, Mr. Missionary, you told me to get rid of Mr. Wagawuku, and I got rid of Mr. Wagawuku. But I see over there you've got this baby and animals and people and stars and things with angels, and you didn't get rid of yours, why did I have to get rid of mine? Nationals perceive, that it, nationals perceive them as idolatrous, even though the missionaries were ob oblivious to that possibility. Imagine a heathen, a heathen telling you that you're doing a heathen practice. Listen, I can't even tell Christians who are part of the ministry that Christmas is wrong without them getting upset with me. When Christmas is exposed for what it really is, this angers Christians. He says people. It angers evangelical, evangelical, my tongue's tied, Protestant people. And there is a reason why it does so. When the pagan celebration of Christmas is rooted up and rejected, then what has become of the Protestant tradition is, in effect, being rejected. Isn't that interesting? And that is why people become angry. It became as a Roman Catholic holy day. And then it became a Protestant holy day. 
And if anyone dares show up with what is really in it, if anybody dares show up, shows it up. Oh boy. If anyone dares show it up for what it really is, they face the wrath of the Protestant religious machine. And in these days, it can get ugly. Jesus is the reason for the season and put the Christ back in Christmas. It was never there. Don't you tell me that! I'll go to Santa Claus and cry, and cry in his lap. That means the preacher over there said you weren't true. There, there. Change your diaper. Christmas is a thorough pagan holiday. In its origin, in its trappings, and in all its traditions. Perhaps we should complete the words of Charles Haddon Spurgeon. You know who he is. You know I had Baptist preacher tell me that this was Charles Spurgeon's words and a man who was successful in the Lord. Well, on December 24th, 1871, Mr. Spurgeon delivered this sermon and we quote, we have no superstitious regard for times and seasons. Certainly we do not believe in the present ecclesiastical arrangement called Christmas. First, because we do not believe in the Mass at all, but abhor it, whether it be said or sung in Latin or in English. And secondly, because we find no scriptural warrant, whatever for observing any day as the birthday of the Savior. And consequently, its observant is a superstition because it's not of divine authority. Superstition, I well, let me keep reading what this is a quote. Superstition has fixed most posi positively the day of our Savior's birth. Although there is no possibility of discovering when it occurred. It was not till the middle of the third century that any part of the church celebrated the nativity of our Lord. Let me stop there for a minute. Charles Haddon Spurgeon said it wasn't to the third century. That means Jesus and the twelve apostles, including Paul, did not take part in Christmas. I'm going back to the quote now. It was not till the middle of the third century that any part of the church celebrated the nativity of our Lord. And it was not too very long after the Western church has set the example that the Eastern adopted it. Because the day is not known. Therefore, superstition has fixed it. Where is the method in the madness of superstitions? Probably the fact is that the holy days were arranged to fit in with the heathen festivals. Dot, dot, dot. Which means things left out, we pick up. And we've seen these festivals. Throughout this 22 page report, we pick up the quote again. Charles Haddon Spurgeon, we venture to assert that if there be any day in the year of which we may be pretty sure that it was not the day on which the Savior was born, it is the 25th of December. Regarding not the day, let us nevertheless. Give thanks for the gift of his dear son. Period. End of quote. Wow. Let's give thanks to God for the birth of his son, but it is not unto the third century. From Dr. H. A. Ironsign's lectures on the book of Revelation, 1920, page 301. It 
giving you the information. Giving you from quotes, from books, the years of books, and the page numbers. You can't say that we're coming up with this of ourselves. The quote from Dr. H. A. Ironside. It is a lamentable fact that Babylon, Babylon's principles and practices are rapidly but surely pervading the churches that escaped from Rome at the time of the Reformation. We may see evidence of it in the wide use of high-sounding ecclesiastical titles, once known in the Reformed churches in the revival of holy days, and church feasts such as Lent, Good Friday, Easter, and Christ Mass, or as is generally written, Christmas. Some of these feasts, when they are turned into the church festivals, they are certainly come under condemnation of Galatians 4. 9 through 11, where the Holy Spirit warns against the observance of days and months and times and seasons. All of them, and many more that might be added, are Babylonish in their origin and were at one time linked with the asterisk and Tammuz mystery worship. It is through Rome that they have come down to us. And we do well to remember that Babylon is a mother with daughters who are likely to partake of their mother's characteristics. End of quote. My friend, if you partake of this, you do not know church history. You are a failure or you just plain want to write it off. Now, excellent book. Hard to read. Give you a headache. But a good godly headache. Loaded with documented facts. Alexander Hyssop's 1916 classic, The Two Babylons, or the Papal Worship. I quote, we don't have a page number on this one. I quote, upright men strove to stem the tide, but in spite of all their efforts, the apostasy went on, till the church, with the exception of a small raiment, was submerged under pagan superstition. That Christmas is a pagan festival is beyond all doubt. The time of the year and the ceremonies with which it is still ce celebrated proves its origin. End of quote. The fact is that everything around Christmas, everything, Is pagan. Jesus Christ of Christmas is not Jesus, it's Tammuz. We can summarize by the saying that nowhere in Scripture are we commanded to commemorate the birth of our Lord, from Genesis to Revelation. And God the Father evidently deemed it unwise to make the date unknown, thank God. Hence, it will always remain unknown and is not to be ceremoniously remembered and celebrated. Wouldn't it be great if we never know that maybe the day of Jesus' birth will not even be known in eternity? I don't know. I'm just throwing that out there. In fact, fact, F-A-C-T, as pointed out in the iron side, a quote above, God has warned us about getting entangled with any special days. Galatians 4.10 Notice though that we are commanded to remember him in his death. 
but no special day was specific for this either. Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Luke 22, 18 and 19. 1 Corinthians 11, 23 to 26. And we're not given a date. There are churches that do this every week. There are churches that do it once a month. There are churches that, hey, we haven't done it in a while. Let's do it now. That's nothing wrong with that. To commemorate his death is scriptural. Any day of the year will do. To commemorate the birth of, is non-scriptural, even extra-scriptural. Deuteronomy 4.2, Deuteronomy 12.32, Proverbs 30, verse 6, Revelation 22, and verse 19. Whether one chooses the 25th of December or any other day. It's non-scriptural. We tried it one time my family, we tried to make Christmas to Hanukkah. It was Stu Christmas. Even if we called it another name. If God had desired us to remember the day of Christ's birth, he could have left us the precise date. But if he had, he would have vindicated every astrologer in the past 2,000 years. In occult circles, the anniversary of a person's birthday is the most important metaphysical day of the year. The Bible recognizes no such significance. It is in, intrig, intrig, intruding that there are only two birthday celebrations recorded in the entire Bible, and they were both of ungodly kings. And the result was in an execution. One was hung and one had his neck removed. Genesis 40, 16 to 22. And Matthew 14, 6 to 10. Mark 6, 21 to 27. The Apostle Paul says, but God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross, not the manger, of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. Galatians 6.14 By itself, we find no salvation in the birth of the Lord Jesus, for salvation was only made possible through his death, i.e. his shed blood. And resurrection. Now the birth, the virgin birth had to happen. All according to the scripture. But you need a death, burial, and resurrection. And the death, burial, and resurrection is the gospel. Our focus should be on the cross. And our ascended savior. Not the cradle. Jesus did not remain a baby all his life. He grew up. Imagine every year showing that baby. Well, if Jesus Christ in 2013 is still that baby, uh, let me say this reverently. Jesus Christ was a retard. He didn't grow. And Jesus Christ is not a retard. Those who love Jesus should certainly rejoice that he was born. And lived amongst us as a man. But if we truly want to glorify him and bear testimony of who he is. We must stop marrying the blessed gift with the debunkery of paganism. If we want to honor his birth, let it be done as he would have it done. Year round and selfishly serving our fellow man as an unending act of love for our God. Let us live every day for Christ. Let us put away all the mixture of pagan customs and take up his mantle and his pure worship and show the, conf the, conf the show the confused world there is a difference. Now I've got here 24 documented references. 
on this report. I'm going to try to name them all within the time we got. So you know where the facts came from. And you can't say that this is a figment of imagination. Now we're going to deal with some names. And I apologize if I say their names wrong. Number one. The Assemblies of Yahweh. The Case Against Christmas. Sacred Name Broadcaster Bethel. PA 23. PP. Number two. Becker. RF. The Truth About Christmas. Chapel Library, Venice, Florida, 36 pp. 3. Blanton Raymond, The Christmas Lie, Highways and Hedges Tracks, Liberty, South Carolina, I believe SC is, 13 pp. 4. Bunday George, The History of Christmas Card, Putman Publishing, New York, 1954, 304 PP. Dagger, Albert James, The Origin of Christmas Traditions, Media Spotlight, Special Report, Redmond, Washington, 1985, 2 PP. Number six, Dick Lee. DJ and shelter Earl should a Christmas should a Christian celebrate Christmas Grace Reformed Baptist Church Vernonia Oregon 1089 a three-part sermon series each on a 90-minute oil audio cassette tape See, I'm not the only one that preaches Dossie Donald Holiday folklore, phobias, and fun, mythical origins, scientific treatments, and superstitions. And he's got cures in brackets. I don't know. Outcome Unlimited Press, Asherville, North Carolina, 1995, paper edition, 232 pp. 8. L. Well Walter A. in parentheses E. D. Evangelical Dictionary of Theology, Baker Bookhouse, Grand Rapids, Michigan, 1984, pp. 218-221. And some of these places, some of these names, you Baptists know. Number nine. How of Charles, The Truth About Christmas, The Christian Jew Foundation, San Antonio, Texas, 13 pp. How of Charles again, Is Christmas a Jewish Holiday? Good question. Message of the Christian Jew, November, December, 1993, pp. Cover 1, 2, and 7. I advise you get these, these works and read. They're, they're ex excellent. I give each one of these people the proper credit. Number 11. And again, I apologize for the names. Helgerson John C. Considering the Christmas issue. The Church of the Open Bible, Burlington, Massachusetts. 1231-90. 12 pp. 12. Hisla, Alexander, the two Babylons, or the Papal worship, Lazikox Brothers, Neptune, New Jersey, 1959, 2nd edition, 330 pp. Cole, John, I got a little problem here, hold on. Cole, John, Our Baptist Heritage, Heritage Baptist Church, Salem, Indiana, 
volume two, number three, 1192, excuse me, 8PP. Number 14, McCurry, Robert, the God made, excuse me, the God man has made, Heritage Press, Sharpsburg, Georgia, I believe GA, 8PP. I'm giving you the quotes. I'm giving you the names. I'm giving you the books. Nessenbaum Stephen. I've heard of that name. The Battle for Christmas. Alfred A. Knopf, New York, 1997, 381 PP. Here's a name. Pink, A.W. A.W. Pink. Xmas, Chapel Library, Venice, Florida, 6 PP. Schneider, Michael. Is Christmas Christian Chapel Library, Venice, Florida, 15 pp. Sperlin Ed, where is the Christ in Christmas? Voice in the Wilderness, Milford, New Hampshire, 1192, 8 pp. Spurgeon CH, Joy Born at Bethlehem. A sermon delivered on the Lord's Day morning, December 24th, 1871, Metropolitan Tabernacle Pulpit, PP 697-698. 20. Unknown. My Lord has not told me to do it. The Christian and Christmas. Chapel Library, Venice, Florida, 4 PP. 21. Unknown. Ten Reasons Why Christmas is Unscriptural. Chapel Library, Venice, Florida, 8 pp. Vine, W.E. Gospel Tracks Publication. The Collected Writings of W.E. Vine, Volume 5, Glasgow, Scotland, 1986, pp. 436-439. Wilcock, Sean, The Pagan Festivals of Christmas and Easter, Bible Based Ministries, Peter Marsburg, South Africa, 1992, 76 pp. And finally, Wilson Gray, Let's Keep Christ Out of Xmas, Landmark Independent Baptist Church, Archer, Florida, 4 pp. And then this report came from Biblical Discernment Ministries, revised 11, 2002. And we come to the conclusion of one day of 365 days of the year. And this one day, I have lost three preacher friends because I spoke against the pagan holiday that they want to put Christ in now I only attack them through it because they proclaim to be evangelist a pastor and all that they are teaching Christians they are acknowledging that Christmas should be honored amongst Christians, and that is wrong for a person who is an authority or supposedly authority of the Bible. Now, if you are a born again Christian who sits in a pew, who loves the Lord, and you want to continue in this mess, that's your free will. I'm not going to attack you. You have a free will, and you can do whatever you want. I pray that you will listen to these, 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 these studies. I pray you will see that it's wrong. I pray you can see that you cannot worship God with paganism. I pray that you'll get out. And I understand if you want to send me an email for me to pray for you. You're not going to do this in one big shot. Most of you is going to take time. 
Maybe some of you, you can break away from this right away. Glory to God. But you should break away. It should not be in your Christian life. It should not be in your family life. And it should not be in your church life. Now, my church has a tree and Christmas stuff. Should I leave it? No. Should I address the pastor? No. You might say something if the Lord leads you. You might give them these, these lessons. If the Lord leads you, I want to go tomorrow and go into the pastor. Oh, heathen! No. And I don't expect you to go to a fellow Christian and knock him upside the head with your sword and say, You are wrong. No. Now, I'm not, if you've taken it where I've done that, that's not my meaning. I do this out of love for you to know the truth. I raise my voice for preachers who ought to know the truth. For evangelists who ought to know the truth. For missionaries who ought to know the truth and are not preaching the truth. Are leading their lambs, their sheep of God, astray to be devoured by Satan. No church, pastor, missionary, evangelist, Sunday school teacher should be involved in any of this mess. None. At all. And that's where the problem lies. Because the biggest excuse that the person who is saved has is my church does it. I'm here to tell you just because your church does it doesn't make it right. There are plenty of people out there who smoke marijuana. Does that make it right? There are plenty of people out there who are going to get drunk, drive a car, and crash into another car and kill lives. They did it. Does that make it right? There are men tonight are sleeping with a woman that is not their wife. Is that right? But you use the excuse that my church does it. Well, how come you can't commit adultery because it's wrong, but you can go ahead and celebrate Christmas, which is wrong? I know why. And for some of you, it's going to be the most deadliest satanic tool ever to be found. I like it. For some of you, God bless you. you, you've seen the truth, you're going to turn. And you're going to try to do right. Some of you already don't celebrate this holiday, and some of you are taking this, this lesson as encouragement. God bless you. I know somebody in church who, who, who does have a tree and all that. Brother, what do I do? You pray. And show them Jeremiah 10. And leave it at that. Well, I know somebody in the church, and, you know, I love them, or my own family, somebody. You know, they, they got gifts on Christmas. What do I do? Show them Romans chapter 6, verse 23, and Galatians 2 and 8 and 9. And ask them, what greater gift can there be? That you don't need a receipt and you never need an exchange. But the blood of Jesus Christ, our Savior. The judgment seat of Christ is coming right after the Lord comes for the rapture. And this lesson about Christmas is going to burn up in works. And I believe, that's why I'm doing this lesson. I believe you will lose rewards. You want a verse? I'll end this in a verse. Let me go to it. 
Give me a few seconds here. I'll give you a verse. I'm in the wrong book. Hold on. All right, I'll give you a verse, and I'll close. I'll shut up. I ain't going to come peeking through your windows. I ain't going to call you. I ain't going to email you. Second John, verse 10. If there come unto you, if, any, if there come any unto you, and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house. Some Christians are going to receive uh, Santa Claus in their house. Neither bid him Godspeed. Don't bless Christmas. For he that biddeth him Godspeed is a partaker of his evil deeds. If you partake in a pagan holiday, at the judgment seat of Christ, God is going to call you a pagan. And it's not Christian. And I'm done.